Hello and welcome to Storage 202, Getting Beyond Data Gravity, Moving Your Data to Cloud. I'm one of your co-hosts, Ash Alawalia. I'm a product manager for the Google Cloud Platform, and I work on transfer products that help you move your data over the network. Thanks, Ash. Hi, folks. I'm Abhishek Lal, a product manager with Google Cloud Platform. I'm excited to present this session today and discuss moving your data to the cloud. We will start by discussing data transfer use cases and challenges, then move to some exciting announcements that we have to share. We will also do a deep dive into all the new capabilities and finally conclude with Q&A at the end of the session. So to start, um, let's talk a little bit about why we built this suite of transfer products. And the principal motivation is that being able to move your data is an important prerequisite to getting value out of your Google Cloud investment uh, across a variety of use cases. Whether you're trying to lower your costs by archiving or offloading your storage to the cloud, or in situations where you're trying to get more value from your data by running analytical or machine learning pipelines. It also applies in situations where you're lifting and shifting a workload to cloud as part of a larger transformation initiative. And in some instances, it's important to be able to move your data to share information between uh, organizations within your company and with external partners and customers. When moving your data into the cloud, customers may face several challenges. Scaling your processes and scripts to terabytes and even petabytes is laborious. Utilizing all of your resources from source IOPS, network bandwidth, and then optimizing tools and API calls requires a lot of tuning. Validating data integrity across formats and transfer errors can be tricky. And finally, all the time that you spend in building this knowledge and completing the operations could be better spent on something that has longer term sustained business value. Hence, at Google Cloud, we have several transfer services to address these challenges. Next, Ash will provide an overview of what we offer. Let's talk a bit about the transfer product offerings that we have today. And we'll start with the storage transfer service, which is a managed service for large scale batch data transfers from one GCP region to another, or from other clouds like AWS S3 into Google Cloud Storage. The second product offering, the storage transfer service for on-premises data, helps you move data from on-premises file systems into Google Cloud Storage. It is also a managed service for large-scale batch data transfers. In some instances, you need to move your data from your private data center to cloud, and it's just a small bit of data. And for that, we uh, offer the uh, GSUtil command line utility. This is a utility you can invoke inside of a script or from the shell as part of your daily workflow. Now, all of the products that I've talked about so far move data over the network. In some instances, you have too much data uh, to move over the network. It would just take too long. Or you may have no network connectivity at all. In those instances, we can ship you a physical product called the Transfer Appliance, which you can load with data and then ship back to Google for upload to the cloud. So let's now talk a little bit about the new product announcements and updates that we've made to these services. We'll start with the storage transfer service, which moves data between clouds. We're really excited today to announce that we're uh, uh, launching a public global beta for supporting Azure Blob Storage. This will enable you to move data from Azure Blob Storage to Google Cloud Storage with all, with all of the features that we offer for S3 to Google Cloud Storage transfers today. In addition, we're announcing a public beta for VPC service controls. This will enable you to move data from outside of Google Cloud into a Google Cloud storage bucket that is inside of a security perimeter. In addition, it'll enable you to move data between two security perimeters. If the source bucket is in one perimeter and the destination bucket is in another, we'll enable you to move data between the two. Finally, we've launched a number of improvements for programmatic usage of the service. Uh, starting with the cus customer provided job IDs. This will enable you to set the transfer ID uh, for transfers you're executing so you don't have to maintain mappings to other ID spaces. For instance, if you're running pipelines that do a lot of data transfers, you can just use your pipeline run ID as your job ID, and that'll make troubleshooting and tracking a whole lot easier. 
we're also enabling the ability to choose uh, objects from the source based on their last modified time. So you can also, for instance, uh, move all objects that were last modified in January. And finally, uh, we're announcing the availability of PubSub notifications. Uh, when a transfer completes, we will publish a message to a PubSub topic that you have configured in advance. And you can then use that message to trigger downstream actions. For instance, if you want to now start processing the data that's been transferred, uh, you can do so programmatically uh, with that PubSub notification. Now let's talk about the storage transfer service for on-premises data. This was announced as entering public beta uh, late la last year in Cloud Next London. And we're really excited to announce today that we are launching it into public GA. In addition, we're at, we have added support for VPC service controls in beta. This will allow you to move data from your on-premises file system into Google Cloud storage buckets that are inside of a security perimeter. In addition, this, is, this will make the service compatible uh, with scenarios where your security perimeter extends beyond cloud and includes your on-premises uh, filer resources. Now let me pass it on to Abhishek to talk about updates uh, for transfer appliance. Thank you, Ash. I'm excited to announce a new SKU of the transfer appliance. Currently, we have TA100 and TA480 as the two models available. In coming months, we will roll out the TA300. Next, let's understand each of these new features and capabilities in details. So let's start by doing a, a quick walkthrough, virtual demo, if you will, of the storage transfer service, moving data from Azure Blob Storage uh, to a Google Cloud Storage Bucket. Now, uh, before we do that, let's just talk a little bit more about this, what this service is designed to do. So firstly, it's designed to be fast. Uh, it uses uh, Google infrastructure underneath. So you're using, for instance, Google's provisioned network pipes from Google data centers to AWS and Azure data centers. In addition, uh, it's designed to scale to petabytes of data. And then finally, uh, we will allocate a number of workers behind the scenes to parallelize your data transfer. And you don't have to deal with any of that. That's all happening um, seamlessly behind the scenes without any management or intervention from you. Secondly, it's designed to be easy. The interface is very simple. You choose your source bucket and credentials, your destination bucket and schedule, and then hit go and uh, it, it starts uh, moving your data. And we'll talk through a more detailed example in just a little bit. Uh, it it's also uh, uh, supports moving data from Azure Blob Storage, S3, and you can also give it a list of HTTP URLs. So any, any data you can reach with a browser, uh, you can move with this product. And finally, it's compatible with all GCP supported languages. So it should be uh, easy to integrate within your current architecture. Uh, and then finally, uh, this service is designed to be secure. All connections are encrypted with uh, TLS encryption. It supports IAM, so you can control which users can transfer data, which users can edit transfers. Uh, and then it also supports uh, data integrity by doing checksums of objects at the source and destination to make sure no bytes have been corrupted in flight. And finally, as we just announced, it supports uh, VPC service controls uh, now in beta. So let's walk through a more detailed example and demo. So if you're going to start by, you know, to move data from Azure Blob Storage to GCS, there's some initial setup you need to do for the product. Uh, as with many Google Cloud Platform products, you need to uh, give yourself, your client uh, application access to the storage transfer service API. And in addition, you need to give the storage transfer service service account, which moves data on your behalf, uh, access to your source and destination. Now, once you do that, uh, let's just talk through, you know, how does a transfer actually work with the service? And there are two kind of key concepts to understand. The first is the job. The job essentially encapsulates the configuration for what you want to do in the transfer, the source, destination, credentials, schedules, and transfer options, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then the second concept that's important to understand is the operation. The operation captures, it captures a specific instance or execution of a transfer. So for instance, you may configure a job to run every day at noon, and uh, you will have an operation for Tuesday's run at noon, which will tell you specifically what happened on that transfer with counters and errors and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, submitting a job is essentially just a two-step process. You submit a config, the config will tell you when this transfer should be scheduled to run. And then the service on its own, when the schedule fires, will create a transfer operation and execute the transfer as you've configured it. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. Here's an example we have of how you might use our REST interface to submit a new transfer job. 
Now let's just zoom into pieces of this so we can understand uh, what information you're sending along. And we'll start with uh, information about the source and destination. So as you can see here, you would supply information about your Azure Blob uh, storage account container and your credentials so we can access your source data. In addition, you would supply uh, information about the destination GCS bucket where you want your data to go. Uh, another part of the proto is schedules. Uh, so you can uh, uh, schedules are comprised of three parts. First, when does the schedule start? When does it end? And at what time do we execute? Uh, all transfer, all storage transfer service jobs run daily. So in this example, hours is equal to one and minutes is equal to one, which means this job will run at 1:01 a.m. And then finally, uh, you can also submit a number of transfer options, which will help you control whether you're allowed to overwrite data uh, for objects that already exist at the destination, or if you want, for instance, to uh, delete data after it's been copied. So more of a move operation um, instead of uh, creating a second copy. And then you can also submit uh, information about what source objects you want us to select. Uh, for instance, you can choose objects based on the last modified time, uh, or you can use include and exclude prefixes to choose objects based on their name. So for example, you could choose an include prefix of foo slash, and that would mean that we'd pull all objects that start with, uh, whose prefix starts with foo slash. So after you submit a job, you're gonna get a response. And as you can see uh, from this pretty big uh, response here, most of that response is the config that you provided played back to you. But there's some of that response that I think is important to highlight. So let's zoom in on that. Now, if we take a look at that, there are some standard metadata you might expect. Uh, we can tell you when the job configuration resource was created, uh, but we also include the job name. This is a, a unique identifier at the project level that you can use to make subsequent calls if you want to, for instance, figure out uh, whether the job is still running, what operations have been executed as part of the job. So if, for instance, you want to monitor a transfer, let's just look at that example in a little bit more detail. And so this is, again, you know, showing you the request that you're making and the full response. Now let's just zoom into pieces of it so we can understand it a bit better. So first, starting with the request. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, you submit the project ID and then the, this unique job name, which will help us identify the job resource and respond. And the response will contain the list of operations that have been executed or are executing as part of this job configuration. Now, if you look at uh, aspects of the response, it's an array of operations, and each operation will contain some important information. It'll contain when this, when this execution began, when it completed, and what status it completed with. Was it a success or a failure? It'll also include uh, error information uh, that you might use for detailed troubleshooting, and it'll also include some counters that'll help you understand how much data actually made it um, in both byte and, uh, and in count units. So let's look through those counters in a little bit more detail. So in both byte and count units, uh, we're showing you essentially every uh, aspect of what the service did. Uh, how many objects did we find? Uh, how many objects did we take action on? Whether we were copying them or deleting them at the source or destination. And then finally, how many objects or bytes uh, did we fail to act on? So you can use this for some of your more detailed monitoring. So that was an example of how we moved data from Azure Blob Storage to Google Cloud Storage. Now let's talk about the storage transfer service for on-premises data, which helps you move data from private data centers to Google Cloud. So uh, an overview of this service, uh, it is designed, again, to be fast. Um, this service requires you to install a piece of software, which we call the agent, to help us push data to Google Cloud. And we worked a lot to make that pro uh, process seamless. So all you need to do is cut and paste a few commands, and your agent is installed and ready to go. It's also designed to scale to petabytes of data and multiple tens of gigabits per second, so it is uh, very appropriate to use for large data transfers. And, and then finally, um, it, making this service, this service is designed to be scalable. So if you want the service to run faster, all you need to do is bring up more agents, and we will push more data in parallel, and, and you should be able to get better speeds. Secondly, it's designed to be easy. Uh, we try to make um, the management and operation of this product uh, as simple and easy as possible for you. Uh, so for instance, the agent software auto updates. You don't have to worry about that. It works just like you know, Chrome auto updates do today. Um, it also uh, works on all connection types that, uh, that Google supports. So whether you're using the public, interconnect, uh, public internet, a direct interconnect or partner interconnect, as long as you can connect to the cloud, uh, this, this product should be able to move data for you. 
And finally, it's designed to be secure. Uh, it uses TLS encryption to protect your data while it's in flight and also computes uh, checksums at the source and destination to make sure that no bytes have been corrupted uh, while the transfer is occurring. And finally, as we mentioned before, it also now supports in public beta uh, security perimeters. So let's talk a little bit more about what the journey looks like when you're trying to use this product. So as I mentioned before, you have to the first step to set it up is to download and install our agent software. This software sits inside of a Docker container image. Uh, so uh, and that container image actually contains more than just the binary for the agent. It also contains this uh, auto updating component that we talked about earlier and a process monitor. So if the agent process dies within the container, we can bounce it back up without you having to worry about it uh, or include that in your operations. Uh, and the other thing uh, I'll just mention is because this is inside of a Docker container, uh, you know, we encourage you to use that with whatever orchestration mechanism you have, for instance, if you use Kubernetes, to run many agents. That'll help us parallelize your transfer and get you faster speeds. Once you've done this one-time setup, then running a transfer is as simple as going into the Google Cloud console, the GUI for the Google Cloud platform, and submitting a source directory and a destination bucket. And once you do that, the agents will all start working in parallel to move your data across. And you can monitor uh, what's happening with your transfer right there in the GUI. You can see what errors have been recorded uh, and all of the counters uh, that we talked about earlier. In addition, one thing I'd like to highlight is that this um, agent fabric is fault tolerant. So if, let's say, you're running 10 agents and five of them go down, the uh, transfer will, will st still keep running. Uh, and it might run a little bit slower because fewer agents are running, but uh, the transfer will still make progress. If all of the agents go down, that's OK, too. Uh, the transfer won't make progress because there are no agents available to push data. But as soon as agents come back up, uh, all of your uh, uh, pending transfers will pick up where they left off. So you don't have to implement any sort of special recovery or retry logic. The service has all of that built in. With that, let me pass it over to Abhishek to talk a little bit more about the new Transfer Appliance product that we announced today. Thank you so much, Ash. I'm excited to introduce the Google Transfer Appliance TA300. We are always listening to our users to understand their evolving needs, and this new appliance addresses several of the features and requirements you have asked for. Next, let me highlight these asks from customers. When migrating workloads, customers want to minimize the downtime and thus reduce impact to their users. Fast transfers reduce the disruptions to rhythms of business when moving applications to the cloud. Moving large data volumes can sometimes be disruptive to already stretched network bandwidth. And the cost considerations could make it unattractive to go and procure new circuits. Finally, there are remote and mobile situations like ships when you need to collect data locally and in a secure and efficient manner. Once you dock at the port, you want to then move this data quickly to the cloud. Learnings from these users have helped to guide the design of the next generation of transfer appliances. The new transfer appliance, TA300, delivers a simple, secure, and performant way to move your data into Google Cloud Platform. This is targeted at customers who are unable to move data online due to limited bandwidth, a desire to reduce the cost incurred on network provisioning, or do not have the network connectivity available in remote and mobile scenarios. Next, let's look at the user experience for transferring your data with the TA300. Customers start by submitting an order form in the Google Cloud Console. We validate your source location needs and ship out the appropriate appliance for your requirements. When you receive the appliance, inspect it for any signs of damage or tampering. A simple attestation program is used to validate that none of the hardware or software within the appliance was tampered in transit. Now, the appliance is ready for you to use. Simply connect it to your network, mount the NFS share exposed, and copy your data. Once all this copying is completed, you can seal the appliance. This finalization step protects the appliance and your data 
from tampering during transit. And it is required before shipping back your appliance. When returned to our uh, processing facility, we attest the integrity of the appliance and move your data securely into the destination bucket. We then inform you of the successful completion of the transfer. As simple as that. Next, let's see the individual capabilities in detail. The appliance is ready to use when it applies. You remove it from the case, place it on a desk or a rack shelf and connect the power. All the cables you need are included in the case. The server itself is designed for performance and reliability. All SSD drives give you faster writes. Networking can scale up to 40 Gbps. And data integrity is maintained across all the system layers. This is a cost-effective service with a simple usage fee model. You can scale up the capacity of transfers by ordering multiple appliances in parallel. This can help you maximize the usage of your source data systems, the internet speed, as well as optimize the end-to-end -end transfer time. Next, let's see how easy it is to move your data to the cloud with the appliance. You do not need any proprietary software to move data into this server. Just mount the NFS share from your workstation and use any common copy tools like Robocopy, rsync to move your files. A single NFS share is exposed with the entire capacity, making it easy for you to run many copy processes in parallel. The local command line interface lets you initialize the server configure IP ports, and check the status of the appliance. The data on the server is always encrypted, and we help you all along the way with shipping, logistics, and any required support. We are looking to make the new TA300 available in all our main regions, starting with the US, then EU, and followed by APAC in coming quarters. Next, let's tour the security features built into the TA300. Customers care deeply about the security of their data, and we take this shared responsibility seriously. Starting with tamper-evident tags on the transfer appliance case, to the TPM chip used to validate the internals, every step has been designed and tested for security. The remote attestation process validates several aspects of the appliance after it has been in transit. First, the TPM module is validated. Then the platform configuration registers are used to check the immutable root file system and software components such as the bootloader, OS, Google binaries, and customer managed public key materials. This is done both at the customer site when they receive the appliance and at Google processing centers when the appliances are returned. Our processes are built for supporting all the key compliance standards and audited regularly. We are there to support you in all the steps, including wiping the appliance and issuing a NIST 8088 certificate for that operation. We are looking forward to serving your needs with the new offer. Next, some important additional resources and information. Thanks so much, Ash, for the session today. And I wanted to thank everyone who joined our session today. I hope you enjoyed our discussion on the use cases, challenges, and solution that Google offers to enable you to move your data to cloud. And we hope you will try out all the exciting new capabilities that we have announced today. Thank you so much and really appreciate your time.